Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. We start promptly in just four minutes. Your host and presenter today here at Online Trader Central, Melissa Armo, is, is your host and presenter from the Stockswish.com. We start promptly in exactly four minutes. Uh, the slide is up, uh, as Kathy has posted in the room there. We welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today. And again, start time promptly in just now three minutes. Three minutes start time. Thank you again, everyone, and welcome. Hello again, everyone, and welcome. We start promptly in just one minute here at Online Trader Central. Sunny Days is here with us, so we can start. Uh, but we'll, we'll wait for some others to join. We have some of the other people who are still registering as we speak. Uh, Andy, uh, Giles, Steve, and others. This is Online Trader Central. Welcome, uh, uh, Steve, Tracy, Star, SB Trader. Anna Taz, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, GR Jake is here with us. This is Online Trader Central, and your host and presenter today, Melissa Armall from the Stockswish.com. My last person to join was, uh, well, let's change that, uh, Patrick and Reggie. All right. Again, everyone, thank you and welcome. We start promptly at exactly at, uh, before 5.30. And with that, let's provide the professional question. Jim, are you ready? Okay, and cue the trumpets. And after that, ladies and gentlemen, the sound of the trumpets means it's time to begin. <laughs> from the stockswish.com, please welcome Melissa Armo. Thank you so much, Kevin and Kathy with Online Trader Central. Welcome. First of all, I would like to wish everyone a happy new year. Welcome to 2015. I am the very first webinar presenter of this calendar year 2015 boy that must have some significance so thank you for being here today and my name is Melissa Arma I own a company called the Stock Swish LLC I started the company back at the end of 2012 oh can you hear me <laughs> I, I thought I had the mic on all right I was talking and no one was listening but luckily you caught it quickly <laughs> Welcome, welcome everyone. I was saying Happy New Year. That's all that you missed. I was saying Happy New Year and thanks so much for coming. Welcome to 2015. Here I am, the first webinar I'm doing of the year, the first webinar for Online Trader Central. I was saying there must be some significance to that. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't have the microphone on, so thank you for letting me know. My name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stocks with LLC. I am a day trader. I day trade the U.S. stock market. So today's lecture is going to be about 
helping you, if you are a trader, if you're thinking about becoming a trader, to find that one thing that's missing in your trading. And I don't care if you're brand, brand new, been doing this for a long time. If you're at the place where you are either losing money or you are not making what you consider enough, there might be something missing. Obviously, there's something missing or you'd be making good money, okay? Because it is not impossible to make money in the market. It actually isn't. Now, there are a lot of people that want to trade and be successful and aren't, but it's not impossible. It's just that most people are lacking that one thing about trading. And we're going to talk about this through the lecture one thing I want to mention then before we start is trading is one of these things where it's like if you have 99.99999% of it, you might still not be successful. Trading is one of these things that it's like so fabulous once you get it because the potential is so huge for the money that you can make that you actually have to have everything. You have to have like 100%. It's not like you can skate by and make money every day in the market missing even just a wee little bit of it. You have to have everything. Okay, this is what it is. And this is one of the things, reasons why many people uh, don't stay with their trading or they come back and they go in and they're back and forth doing different things because they're lacking that one thing. And I'm going to try to put you on the right path this year. I think this is going to be a good lecture. I have a lot of charts in this lecture. And so feel free to ask me questions as we go along. You can just type them in the room. I'm the only person that can see the questions, but I will answer them in live time because I have plenty of time to go over it today. If you have any questions after we're done, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I also have a ton of videos on YouTube. You can go there. You can feel free to call me and join my Facebook or Twitter website as well. So welcome. Welcome today. There's going to be a special bonus for the live people here, which is all of you. I'm going to pick five people. I had given random numbers to Kathy. She's picking them up, and she's going to email them to me. I'll be emailing the winners when we're done today. Five people. Five is a lot. I'm going to give 30 minutes to five people this week to go over anything they want, a stock, an ETF, anything one-on-one -on -one in my live trading room. So this is something special I'm offering, and I think it's nice for some people that have been following me and they want more information. This I'm going to give some one-on-one -on -one time to some people alone. So it'll be a random thing. Kathy's picking the numbers, and you'll find out tonight, so check your inbox. Also, at the end of the webinar, depending where we're at in time, we might do it live here or go over to my trading where we're going to review the market for 2015. At the end of today's webinar, we're going to review it, and this is how the market pretty much closed today in the QQQs. So what is the one thing that you might be missing? You've been trying to do this. You've been at it. What's the one thing? Well, if you've been trading on and off for years, some of you might be doing this for two to three years. Some of you might be doing it for 20 plus years. I've met people that have been uh, attempting to be successful at the market for more years than I'm alive. I'm not even kidding, actually. In fact, I, I met a really nice man recently. I'm not sure if he's here tonight, uh, Rajinder, who said, you know, that he sees the youth and vitality in me has excited him to learn more about the market now. And he's retired. He's an older gentleman and he's retired. So even if you've been doing this on and off, you might be losing steam or motivation, but the fact is that you don't have to give up. No matter what place you are in your life, no matter how long you've been doing it, many times traders have a lot of information, but they lack this one missing piece. And trust me, for those of you that have been doing this for more than 10 years, uh, you obviously have a lot of information, okay? And But the thing is, you might be missing this one thing. And without it, you cannot see lasting success because it's that important. Trading is one of those things that if you know what to look for, it's easy. If you do not know what to look for, trading can be challenging. Trading is also one of those things, as I was saying earlier, if you know 99.9%, .9 it might not be enough to be successful. Why? Specifically because there's so many people in the market that are trying to grab the same thing, which is money. So you gotta, you have to be like right there with everything you got, and you must know 100% to be successful. 2015 is about making your life easier and better. This is your shot. This is your chance. It's very early in the year, only five days into the calendar year. Okay, for you to start getting serious about what counts in your trading. And you can turn your trading around no matter where you are, no matter what you know, and make it better with this one advantageous strategy. So what is the one piece of the puzzle that is missing for many traders? And I picked this chart here. This is a, a puzzle. And the one you, piece you see here, it's missing. You can't tell what this is sometimes without the one piece. This, this piece might hold the key to the whole picture of the puzzle that you're trying to create. And if you lose it or you dropped it or it's under the sofa, and you can't find it or somewhere, then nothing makes sense. And, you know, a lot of people are in this space with their trading. 
The thing is that the one piece that's missing for many, many people is gaps. Now, I know that a lot of you are trading and you know what a gap is. I'm going to go over what a gap is for people that are new. But this isn't about knowing that gaps exist. It's about knowing their significance. Like, why do they matter? Okay, so bear with me here. First, I'm going to explain for people that don't know what a gap is. This is a chart of the SPY. A, bit, well, a gap is just when the market or a stock, and this is a chart of the SPY ETF, closes at one price at 4 o'clock Eastern time, and then opens at a different price the next morning when the market opens at 9.30. Now, I know this chart is a little small, but, you know, I wanted to show more information here. So you can see here, if we take it across all the way over to the right, where the market closed at like 190-something and the SPY on this day. But then if you got up in the morning, you take it across, take it across, take it across, prices over here on the right-hand side, you can see that the market opened at like 191-ish, 192 something, close to 192. So this is a gap. The size from where this closes to this opens can be anything. Okay. The fact is it's different, and that means it's gapping. Now this is what is considered a bullish gap, meaning that it gapped up. Okay. Now that is what a gap is. Now, why do they matter? There's a lot of gaps in this chart. There are bullish gaps like this one here I just pointed out. There are also are bearish gaps. This was a bearish gap here. This is back in the summer of 2014. The market closed here at one price and gapped down. This green line here is the 50 period moving average. So the market gapped down on that and fell on the day. Sold off. It's this red bar means selling. So this is a bearish gap, this one here. Now there's lots, okay, I could point many, many out. But the fact is, there's a lot of gaps in the chart. They hold significance. Not everyone does, as much as some, but they all, with their gapping, could have the potential to do something that could be of significance. So how do you know which ones are the ones that matter? Like, which ones are the ones that you would buy? and which ones are the ones that you would sell or short to know to take a position in a chart. And I just picked the SPY here. I could have picked any chart in the world, and we are going to look at some other stock charts today. But they do matter. And the fact that some of you are trading and know what a gap is does not mean that you know the significance of it. Okay? This is why this missing piece counts. Gaps matter because they pinpoint opportunity. The cornerstone of lasting trading success is really to be able to pinpoint opportunity because how do you make money in the market? You make money in the market by taking advantage of opportunity. Opportunity means that you're seeing something that's going to happen and you take the trade in that stock before that event happens, before the move happens, the volatility. There's no opportunity if you get into something too late or past the point or it's almost made the move where it's done. It's like anyone in the world could tell that something's doing something by then and get in it. And then you obviously the opportunity is gone. Opportunity means good risk to reward, potential for significant profit, high odds of succeeding that the trade would not fail, meaning that it would make you money. Okay, Because every trade you take is potential for it to fail. You have to know that. That's why you size yourself correctly with risk. Okay, It's called calculated risk. But you're pinpointing opportunity in gaps. These are all daily charts. Okay, Someone asked. All of these here. And this one goes back to 1999. This is a spy again. Now, and we are going to talk about this at the end today. Anyways, they matter because they pinpoint opportunity. You could have been long the spy now for quite some time. If you knew how to read bullish gaps, like I do, you could be up a lot of money right now in this chart and still in it. You can still be in this, and we will talk about this later. If you did not know how to read gaps, you might not have taken this. You might have missed this move that has happened here in the last two, three years or plus. And you might have been waiting for it to come into support or do different things. Okay. Now, support and resistance, I'm not going to talk about it in depth today. I might do another webinar on that sometime later this year. But support and resistance are meaningful in a chart, but not as meaningful as a gap. Because support and resistance are not opportunity. Now listen to what I'm saying. This is actually important. And I never plan what I'm going to say. I just fly by the seat of my pants. But I'm telling you right now that support and resistance is not opportunity. Support and resistance is not in point opportunity. Opportunity is in a gap because it is a strategy and support and resistance is not a strategy.
Now listen to what I am saying. I just taught you something there for free right now. Write it down. Support and resistance is not a strategy. If you are playing it as a strategy, it doesn't work all the time, and you know this. And if you are not making money playing that as a strategy, the reason is it doesn't work because it's not a strategy. Opportunity is something that has a high potential for you to make profit on a regular basis with a highest of success and a good risk to reward to go to the target, to take size in for profit. That is in only a strategy, and in the case of this, it is a strategy of gaps. And by the way, there really is no other strategy to play in the market. Okay, now. Opportunity can mean to get in or to get out. Like you could have been in this chart long. This is the chart of big. You could be long big. You could have been long big for the last you know year or something. And then the stock gap. This was back in December. Say you were up. Say you got in this. Say you got in this down here. Say you got in this around 30. You were long big at 30. It shot up. You made 20 bucks on this. You held it. This is an overnight trade. Pretend you did it as a long-term thing. You were in this actually in less than a year. You were up $20. It's pretty, you know, it's nice money. So then the stock gaps down. Now you were in it at 30. It gaps down to 44. What are you going to do? Crap. You would know to exit this here and sell your long. You're still up. You're up $14 in profit. Did you give some back? Yes. But the fact is that this gap here, you would know then if this was a significant gap, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. If you figured out that it was, per the system that I use and the method I use, if you figured out it was, then you would sell your long, despite the fact you had to get back profit. And by the way, you see where this is at now. If you did not sell your long here, this is trading around 39 something. So you would have given back an extra $5, and you still would have been up. But the point is you can use this for the opportunity for so many different ways. This is what I'm going to talk to you about here, which is gaps, but I use a method to figure out these things. So you would know whether to buy it or sell it or short it. Okay. You cannot be all over the place like a yo-yo and expect to make it. You just can't. It's just, you can't. It's, it's, it just verifies everything I was telling you earlier about the fact that, you know, you have to know everything. It's not impossible to know everything. It's just not. Okay. And you really can't be all over the place. What do I mean by that? I mean, one day you're doing climactics, one day you're doing buy set up, sell set ups, one day you're buying a support, the next day you're shorting, the next day you're doing a gap, the next day you're doing a novice gap. I mean, you're doing like 20,000 things. It depends what you feel like when you get out of bed in the morning. You, you can't make money like that, okay? You're all around like a yo-yo. One day you're doing equities, one day you're day trading, one day you're swing trading, the next day you're doing futures, the next month you decided you're going to do options, forex. I mean, there's so many things you can do. All you need is one thing to do to be successful and make money. And then you just, you know, put more risk into it as far as the sizing. And you get really good at that one thing. That's a lot better than being a yo-yo. It's about focus and the focus is on one strategy. And the nice thing about the strategy and gaps that I'm going to discuss with you today is that you can use it for overnights. You can use it for day trades. You can use it for swing trades, for core trades, for longer term like some of the charts I just showed you in the SPY and even the big, and you could do an option in it. Instead of taking the equity trade, you would have to know how to do the option. I personally do not do options, but that is something you could do that might be more cost effective for you if you did not want to open up an active day trading account. It, you really want to have the complete 100% focus. This idea of being a jack of all trades and master of none is a waste of time. It's really just a waste of your time. And even though it might not be costing you anything to go to free webinars or read books or practice on a demo, it really is costing you because your life has meaning. And the time that you spend doing things is valuable. And you really actually can't put a price on that. So you might think you're saving your pennies by trying to figure it out yourself or you know, just taking your time and five years goes by, two years goes by, three years goes by. Really, in that time, if you learn how to make money, you could have been profitable and your whole life could be different. My whole life right now at this point and for the last few years actually has been different than it was 10 years ago in a way that I can't even describe to you. And it's all because of the stock market. So you, your time is actually something that you can't even put a price on it. You can't. All right. So think about that. Now, why trade gaps? 
Stocks that gap have big moves on the day, and they can continue for weeks and months. Stocks that gap usually have their moves within the first part of the trading day in the morning, and you can be done trading by lunch if you day trade, which is what I do. This is what I love to do. And the reason that I love to day trade is because I know exactly how much money I have every day before I go to sleep at night, and I actually like that. And I also can get it right away. I could pay myself every day if I wanted to. That's not necessary, but I could, okay? Or once a week or twice a week or once a month or whenever you want. I have the money, boom, it's there. If you're in stuff for weeks or months, you're waiting for longer term targets. Okay, Braulio. No, you didn't miss that much. Wonderful. Sounds good. So, stocks that gap have huge moves with small stocks, which means you can make more money with less risk, and stocks that gap have a chart precision that is very unique in the market. Sometimes you can take a swing or a core trade in a gap. So you can use the same strategy even for longer term trades that you would use for day trading. This is a benefit. It's actually extremely unique. It is very, very unique to have a strategy that you can use for day swing and core trading. But again, going back to what I said a few minutes ago, in my mind there is no other strategy that exists and this is probably why it works for everything. That's probably exactly why it works in every time frame because it's the only strategy really that exists in the market to play. It's very unique. But the fact is if you learn it, you can parlay it into so many different time frames that you play. Now why is that the case? It is the case that it works in different time frames and it is the case that it's a powerful strategy to make money because gaps are created by institutions in the market. Now I'm going to talk about Target. Again, this, you can't really see the bars very close here. And I did this for a reason here. I just want to show you this chart all the way back to 2012. This is a chart of Target. It's a very bullish chart. There are some people out there, I know there could even be people here tonight, that want to fade or short or think Target's going to come in and they want to get a quick short in this. Target is a very bullish chart and should not be shorted, in my opinion. And in fact, it's probably going to get hit $100 this year. Okay, I think the high up there was 76 something. Now, you could have already been in this, okay? If you knew how to do gaps, you could have done the quality bullish gaps in this, or you could have been in this for a longer term trade. Now, going back to what I was saying about institutions, someone mentioned to me the other day that someone that was a mutual acquaintance had started a hedge fund. And this person, I know, does not have a... Uh, a lot of experience in trading, but they have a lot of money. And it reminded me about how many different types of hedge funds there are actually that are in play in the market. And I know I don't really talk about this that much in some of the videos and webinars, but I'm going to talk about it more this year because I think it's important for you to realize, and this is what helps you stay the conviction in some of your trades, that you may be in something that moves, that moves against you for a short period, and you panic and want to kill the trade but it's really not doing anything wrong. And one is sometimes making a move like that if it goes against you in that short period. It could be what I call a mini hedge fund. Let's call them a mini hedge fund, which is not the people that are really controlling stocks or the market. When I've been talking about institutional money, which is how gaps are made, I'm talking about several billion dollars under management, 100 million or more. But I was just reminded the other day that actually there's so many people that do start funds. You could start a fund with a million dollars. You could, $10 million could be a fund. I'm not saying $10 million is a lot of money, but I'm saying on the level of hedge funds, that's nothing. So when you have something like Target, okay, Target had this rally here. This rally, this almost went vertical. I mean, look at this. This is like beautiful. Target almost went vertical all the way up from like, well, you could have even gone back here to 60, all the way up here to like 68. Target had a gap. This is a bullish gap. I know this is very small, but it closed here the night before at 68 something. And then it opened up here and gapped up to 70 something. Now I know traders look to short this on the day because they thought it was climactic because it did go vertical. It did gap up quite a bit, more than $2. But actually, guess what? Look what it did. It rallied on the day. It had a big, massive green bar and it's continued ever since. And if you bought this gap, you're still in the trade. It's held $70. Now, I'm not saying it has to hold $70 to continue up to $100, but I'm saying here's an example of the power of the gap of what? Institutions that continue to buy into Target, which is what exactly happened here. 
Now, if you are an individual person, one person, you're not a mini hedge fund, you're not a hedge fund at all, you're just you and your trading account, however much money you have, you can profit by going with the correct momentum of something like Target. Now, maybe Target would have been a short here. How would you have known? I have developed a method to rate the gap. I rate it pre-market, before Target even opens, before 930 even happens. So then I would know if Target is a short or a long. This is the system that I do, but it is centered and focused on gaps. And you would rate the gap before 930 to know whether to buy Target, sell Target if you own it, or short it. Because remember, you could have been long Target. Let's just say you bought Target at 60 and you were up $8, and this gapped up here and you were up, you might have thought, crap, should I sell it? And then you quick rate the gap. And then your rating say, wait a minute, no, 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 no. This is a good one, you say, for a long to continue higher, and you hold your long and you get paid. You continue to get paid, actually, then you don't sell it. Whereas if you wouldn't know what to do, you might have sold out of the long. And if you didn't know what to do, you might have shorted as a day trader. And if you didn't know what to do, you might have not bought it. And if you bought it, you would have made money. And you would still be in it. Although, like I said, this doesn't have to hold 70. Continue to the next target. So the point, though, is that gaps are significant and a missing piece that many people forget or don't observe or observe incorrectly because they are complex. I'm not going to lie to you. They are complex, but you need to know what to look for. And if you do learn what to look for, then you'll know. And then in that knowing, you'll be able to take advantage of the opportunity to take the trade or exit something that you're in or play it in the right direction, which many people fail to do. Because a lot of people are just looking to buy support and short resistance in stock charts. Or they're looking for a reversal moves. Or they're looking for something that they qualify as extended, which many people will qualify target as extended. But actually, it's not. <laughs> i got to be honest with you, it's not. And I'm not saying it's going to shoot up vertical like this again to the next target. But I'm saying, look at this thing. Okay, This is even moving ahead of the market. That's how beautiful this chart is. So institutions, when I talk about that, so you know, if you ever listen to my videos or from today, the lecture here, is it is about major, major money. But you have sometimes, and we will discuss this at the end of today when we review the market for 2015, you will have moves that fluctuate. Nothing really goes continually in a straight line up or down because of the fact that there are participants in the market that actually do have money, real money, and they sometimes make things move against what is the current trend or institutional uh, move that the institution is making. And if you don't understand what's going on, to see that, which is that person it might be your opponent, to know what's happening in there, then you may exit a trade or take a trade in the wrong direction haphazardly. And again, we'll talk about this later. This is where the conviction is necessary. Gaps really sync everything together. Sometimes it's not about changing the entire way you're trading in order to become profitable. A lot of you have a base level knowledge information that exceeds that exceeds uh, what would be beginner. Some of you are even intermediate, but you're missing this. You're missing this and you're never going to make the money you want or be able to quit your job or day trade for a living without this advanced level information that I know. Because it's advanced. But I figured it out already, so you just learn it from me. Sometimes it's just that one gold nugget of information to mesh everything. Everything you already know together to get you to the next level. And it's not like it has to take a million years either. It's like, oh, yes. And I call it spontaneous enlightenment, really. I was talking about this earlier today in the trading room. It's like, whoop, there it is. And you know it. Also, no matter what type of trader you are, you can use gaps because they happen in every chart in existence and they happen every day. Meaning if you're not a day trader and you don't want to be a day trader and you have no interest at all in being a day trader, you can still use gaps if you take overnights and you really need to understand them because if you're in an overnight and something gaps against you, like Target, if you're in Target, for example, long and the gaps against you down, you could be upside down in the trade and you could be down money. So you really need to understand gaps, especially if you're holding overnight. It makes it a lot easier to be consistently profitable if you have a strategy that sets up daily. If you're a day trader or even a swing trader. Because swing traders, you want to be in something and out within five to seven days. Two weeks the most. And you want to make money consistently. And so you got to have the setups. And if you don't have a lot of setups, it's how are you booking profits? Now, I'm going to talk about this gap here. This is what I really like to do. I like to do shorts. It's just my thing. I love to short. This was a gap that happened in a stock chart. Okay, we're off the market here now. This is a daily chart again. You can see at the bottom here the dates. This is KKD. This had a gap back in the middle, well, first week or so of December. It closed up here the night before at $20 and some cents. The next morning it opened here at 19 something. 
it actually opened right above the 50 period moving average. You can see this here. This green line again is the 50. And I got up in the morning and I looked at this. And then I used my method to determine what to do with this thing here. I have three choices. I can go long it. I can short it. Or I can do nothing. Okay. Some days I get up and I look at a gap and I say there isn't anything to do with that. You could do nothing some days. Just pass. Okay. But there was a good bearish gap and it had a short in it. The stock opened. It rallied. Here's the short. Boom. This is an example where you could have been out of this trade. And again, this is why I love day trading. I just love day trading. You could have been out of this trade in literally like less than five minutes. You could have been in it and out of it in less than three minutes. Because it did go to the first target very, very quickly. Went past the first target. The first target was 19. It actually dropped through and hit through 1880. But you could have just killed it right in this second big red bar in here. You're shorting, remember. This is not a long. You're shorting this here. You're getting this momentum. This is what I'm talking about, about volatility. That's created from the gap itself. Boom. And you're out. Now, the price of the entry of the short was 1933. Again, you're not buying it. You're shorting. And if you don't know what that is, that's something you can email me. Stop has to be in. It is a hard stop because you are actually want to put in a certain risk amount. If you don't put in a certain amount of a stop, then where? what if this thing goes up to 22? I mean, you have to put in a stop. So I use hard stops, okay? That's how you figure out your position sizing. If you took 6,000 shares short of KKD in 1933, your risk is 12 cents. Effectively on 6,000 shares, this is $720. That means your R is around 700, 750. Okay? You exit the first half of the position at the first target, which is 19. Again, it dropped through 19 in the first drop down in the first five minutes. You could have made almost a uh, almost $1,000, 990. You just booked this quickly, quickly, quickly because that was a big drop. And it also got to the first target. Final exit. It did continue down. You're lowering your stop through this. It took later into the afternoon, 1850. Although the low of the day in this was like 1820 something. Total profit 24. No, actually, total profit 2490 in this portion. You add the 990 plus the 2490. So your total profit on the day is this. So the 2490 profit is from taking the short at 1933, exiting at 1850, 3,000 shares. And then quick this drop in here. And I want to explain why this is important. Because if you were 720 on the whole position and you got out of 990 in the first drop, what, what there's your, you can't possibly lose on the day. Put the stop back in. Put the stop at 1945. You can put the stop at break even. I don't trade like that. But you put the stop back in if you're following me at the place. Worst case scenario, you if this trails, you lose 360 or thereabouts. You book 990. You're up on the day 600 bucks, five something. You can't lose that on the day. You let it ride. You let it ride to the target, you've got nothing to lose. You can't lose money on the day, but, but that's why I use a stop. Risk to reward is 4.83. That means for every dollar that you risked on the day in this position, you made $4.83 if you played it out this way. You could have gotten out of the whole thing in the first draw. You could have made 33 cents on 6,000 shares, which is nothing to sneeze at, actually. Okay, that's still a nice trade. Still, actually, would be way over $1,000. So it would be a nice trade, but you made more, almost twice as much, actually, if you held it. And you weren't at risk because you're up no matter what. Worst case scenario, you trailed, you went about 500 something. And this is how you day trade. And actually, you would do something similar to this if you'd swing trade two, different sizing. Okay, you're not taking a 6,000 share position in overnight, but something similar as far as piece billing in and out of front of the targets. Now, let's go over what I was talking to you about with institutions. This is a green bar blowout. Conviction tested. Okay, this is, I remember this. So, say you did the trade here. Let's pretend that you took half out. You kept the rest with a stop up here. You're going along, everything seems fine, it continues, everything seems fine, everything's wonderful. This bar happens. And so here, you're up. You're up money and you see your PL and you're up, and then this bar happens. And actually, do you see where this went? So if you got in this in 1933, you actually were up money down here. This is on the half. Or let's just say you had both thing for Pete's sakes and you didn't get out of any. And then all of a sudden you weren't you weren't up at all, and you're like, ah, 
what is this? This is a green bar blowout, meaning your conviction would be tested. After you see this, what would you do? Would you kill the trade? This is what I'm talking about, about sometimes you have things that happen in charts so you need to know how to read. If this was actually buying, stepping into the thing that was institutional buying in this one minute chart here, which is happening, again, this is a one minute chart, just so you know, we're, we're on a one minute chart now for these entries. Daily was the bigger picture. If, you're, if you are in this and you know and understand this, then you will stay through the trade to get the rest of the profit. It dropped, like I told you, down at 1820 on the day, later. If you don't understand this, you might quick kill the trade. You might have killed a break even, you might have killed it up, you wouldn't be down still, but you would have given up then a lot of profit if you didn't get out of it down in here. You would have given up a lot of profit for this to go on to work if you didn't understand what this was or what this whole thing is here, which is the gap. So the reason I'm able to, you know, read something and keep the conviction, I call it conviction, is because I have a full understanding of gaps, okay? Where do I get the conviction? I get the conviction from the golden gap. I get the conviction from there. It allows me to take the trade from there. It allows me to stay with the trade when you get a bar like that. And if you've J, J, J traded before, you've seen bars that happen like that or wiggly jigglies. Okay, like I was saying, nothing goes straight down the line. Every once in a while, though, you will get something that actually just falls off a planet into the open. Those are the best ones. But this kind of did in the first five minutes because it went to the first target. So where do I get the conviction? I get the conviction from the 26-point rating system. This is how I do it. How do I know to short KKD? How do I know not to buy KKD? How do I know to do anything at all with KKD? Because I use a rating system. I rate the gap on the daily chart pre-market before 930 of any stock or on any ETF that I choose to trade to know what I should do with it. This is the one piece of information that many of you are missing. You do not understand the significance of gaps or how to determine what to do with them. And I will say that I have met so many traders that talk about gaps and they have no idea what to do with them. And they actually don't understand what to do with them. The reason that I know what to do with them is because I spent three years of my life, three long years of my life, figuring out the 26 points to determine what to do with them. And it works. And this is how I get the conviction. This is how I can stay with a trade that I'm short in that has a big blowout green bar like KKD to get more profit out of it on the day if I happen to still be in it. You may get a bar like that that happens after your trade is done. But in that case, it happened early in the morning. That's why I wanted to point it out. The 26-point the rating system is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for anyone that finds me to learn something special because I created this myself. It does not exist out there anywhere else. I made it up. It's me. I made it up. Three years of my life figuring this stuff out. It's not buying software because there's no software. This is just you alone with your charts. The rating system is a way to read price and all you need is your charts and that you, you can actually use it to make money, whether it's day trading, swing trading, or core trading. It's like getting down to the meat and potatoes of a chart. And unfortunately, we live in an electronic world and there's so many different methods and softwares and things out there. And I know people are buying them. I'm sure 90% of the people here have bought softwares. And I'm not saying software programs are bad. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I, I personally would have no conviction into allowing any machine to trade for myself. I am the best person to make decisions for my own trading. I'm the best person to can read things in real time, and I know what to look for. And so are you. But many of you don't know what to look for, so you use a machine. But a machine does not have a high level of accuracy. If there was, there'd be one machine. We'd all buy it. It would be too expensive to afford. There is no such thing. So think about this, because there might be a reason that you are here tonight, that you came. Now let me look at a question here. Canned education, I don't know what you mean by that. There is reversal times in the market. Yes, there is. I don't know if that's your question. There are, time, time, is, time is an indicator that exists in the market. I'm not sure exactly what, you, what your question is, there are several indicators that exist on my chart. Time is one of them, actually, that I use. That's why I have the clock here. You see, this is, this is the clock that's square. I don't have a lot of indicators, but that's all the time is. Is it something that you look at? Yes. Yes, it is. 
If I'm in something past 4 o'clock, I'm going to be in an overnight. I have to pay attention to the time. I also have to pay attention in the morning because most of the institutions that take positions in stocks, in gaps, whether they're buying them or selling them, make their activities in the morning. The market opens at 9.30. I choose not to trade in the pre-market. You can use those times to take pre-market trades. I do not. There also is a post-market. I don't trade in that time frame either. I don't trade in those time frames because you can't use hard stops and your risk is indeterminate uh, as far as your fills. So yes, time is something that you would consider along with price and volume, which is down here, and you have it on your chart. It's not something that is meaningless. No, it's not meaningless at all. I take everything that's on my chart into consideration. Here, this is, uh, this is a bigger picture of the KKD to show you where it went down in here. Everything that I have on here I take into consideration. Is there anything in here that I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't live without? There's only one thing. Does anyone want to guess what it is? What's the one thing that I, if you said, Melissa, I have to take away everything. I'm sorry, I can't let you trade today. You only can have one thing on this chart. What are you going to pick? What would it be? Does anyone want to guess? What's the one thing I can't trade without? Quick, come on, wake up. It's 5 o'clock. Let's go, people. What's the one thing I couldn't trade without or you either? Take away everything else. Boom. What is it? Nobody's answering. I can't believe no one's answering. Hello? What is the one thing that I cannot trade without and you cannot trade without? Price. Yes. You can call it candles, but it's price. You can't trade without the price of something. Now, how do you know you're getting in with it? You, you can trade. I can trade without anything else but price. If I just a moving price guy, I can trade. I, it's called trading the tape. You know, back in the old day, I just got done saying the meat and potatoes. Okay? That's what you need. This other stuff, I take into consideration. The answer is yes. Can you live without it? Yes. Could you do my rating system and live without it? Yes, because price is what matters, and that's how you're making decisions, and that's how you make money in the end. If I go long something in $19 and it runs up to $20 and I sell it at $20, I made a dollar. If I go long something in $19 and it drops in price and it goes to $18.50, I just lost $0.50. Cents. That's all that really matters in the end. All this mumbo-jumbo stuff and all the things that people put on Fibonacci's and all the systems that are out there, the software programs, everything, everything that's in play. In the end, you just take it all away, and what do you have left? It's the price, and that's why you're going to be focused on that. Okay. These are, this is the 200, this is the 20, and this is the 8. Now, if you did the KKD and you shorted it here, Again, you would have dropped down in the first portion here. And you could have stayed in the whole rest of the half. Now, you're basically lowering your stop all the way down here. So you would have gotten out here where it would have trailed with a lowered stop. This came down, though, and did touch 18.20. But, you know, at this point, you would have thought it was probably going to 18, so you probably would have just lowered the stop, tried to squeeze a little bit more out of it, but then it, it stopped you out. Or you could have taken the trade here and held the whole thing. If you had this much conviction, you could have held the whole thing. This is the U.S. stock market. Tom is asking me about, is this stocks only? You can do ETFs, but it's everything that's in the U.S. stock market because the U.S. stock market gaps. Like, there's only one gap in Forex. So if you're looking to do something like that with a gap, it's the idea of something gapping. ETFs gap, that's fine. Stocks and ETFs gap. So you would use it for either one of those things. It's in the U.S. stock market because it closes and has an open time. Now, let's just say you did do this here and you shorted the whole position in 1933. You had 100% conviction. You loved this trade. Everything was beautiful. And by the way, the market was with you on this day. You could have held this whole thing and got out of the whole thing with the whole trade. You never actually were down. That retest of the big green monster bar that, sh that scared you didn't take you out. You weren't down. Didn't stop you out. You could have made 49.80 and actually went to 1920. I mean, 1820. So actually, if you would have looked at your P&L and set them up a dollar more, you could have actually made over $6,000. Risk to reward getting out here is 6.9 and 18.50, but it did go 20 cents more. So you could have made another 1,200 bucks. So this is a really nice trade no matter how you played it. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, really, 
whether you make $3,600 or $4,900 or whatever, I mean, these, these are quality, quality trades. You look at this number here, and this is your profit. This is determined by how much you're risking. This has to be something you can afford. If it's not, you take what you can afford. This is how you make it, but this is what counts. And really, it's all about the gap. Now, let's go back to what I was talking about, the one missing piece of the puzzle, which is gaps. What else does gaps help you? If you were a person and you would look at this chart and you didn't know what I know, I would say to you, listen, what do you want to do with this thing? Do you want to buy it and support? Someone just asked, what's this, what's this line? This is a 200 pair moving average. You might think, well, maybe I should buy this thing on support. Chart looks good. Your All the moving averages are moving higher. And you might think of buying KKD on support. I would not. So do you see here how, like, this one thing, this one thing would make the difference maybe where a trade that you would think is a great trade, a fabulous trade, the 200 pair moving average, you're like in love with this thing. You're like, oh my gosh, this is like perfect. I'm going to buy it at 1760. It's going to rally all the way back with the market up to 2021. 20, I'm going to, I'm going to take it overnight. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to, this is, a, this is a perfect buy and support. It's pulling in, you know? If you don't understand what's really setting up here in the gaps that are in this chart, you might do that. But again, buying support is not a strategy. Everyone should have a set risk amount. You could vary that if you're doing well. I'm not saying you have a set risk amount that you keep for your whole life. But yes, each trade should be same or close to same with a risk amount, unless I do an ad. That is even a more advanced concept, which we're not going to talk about today. But sometimes stocks allow position sizes for ads, or something does what is called a stock swoosh that I teach in the class and what's I name my company after. And that is something that is a very high percentage of chance of working and a huge move. And I may risk more in a stock swoosh. Uh, you don't know until you see it. That's something that happens live in the day. But other than that, you have a set risk amount that does not vary from trade to trade to trade. Otherwise, your results would be vary. I've been, I have videos all the way back from since my risk has been changing. Actually, I have videos back, I think, I don't know how many years now, three years. So I've increased my risk. That may be why you see the different amounts on there. But sometimes I do do an ad. But it's not that much. I'm not talking about exact dollar. I'm talking about if your risk is 700 and you risk 750, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you can't risk $300 in three trades and $600 in one trade. And then what if the $600 trade doesn't work? You know what I'm saying? It has to be equal or close to equal. That's the best way I would describe it. You can also increase your risk if you're doing well. I would not advise anyone to do that unless it is at the beginning of an earning season. Your time to be changing those things is not in the middle of summer, holiday time, slow season. You know, the time for you to be changing your risk is at the beginning of every earning season. Okay? And you and, and, and when you were doing well. So 2015 is about recognizing opportunity. Okay, you are here at the start of the year, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity in the market this year. I will talk about this more when I talk about the market chart itself here at the end, but I will tell you that 2015 is going to be a year that you're probably going to want to trade if you've ever traded before. This is going to be the year you're going to want to be in the market. It's going to be a year where people that know what to do actually are going to be able to profit significantly. In fact, it's going to be one of those years where if you actually figure out what to do this year, like if you get hooked up with someone like me, you might actually make enough money to feel like everything you did for the last however many years is worthwhile because that's how profitable 2015 is going to be. If you are successful now or not where you want to be and you don't do the right things in 2015, it could be a disastrous year for you. Because a lot of people are not looking at what's setting up here right now in the market correctly, and it could be very challenging for you. Once again, the wide range of success versus number of failure people, the, the width of the, the width, the distance, the separation will be significant. Meaning that the people that know what they're doing this year in the calendar year are going to have all the money, and the people that don't are going to lose and could lose big time, like more so even than they had prior years because of what I see setting up. So I recognize there's opportunity for someone like me for this year. It is new early on in the year. And it is for anyone that understands how the market is setting itself up. And we will talk about this at the end. But this is one of the years where if you've been at it, wanting to day trade, or if you've never done it, or if you've been doing it, 
that it could make all the difference in the world for you to be successful this year. And you'll say to yourself, my gosh, I'm so glad I stuck with it. Look, I traded this year. It's going to be one of the best years the stock market's ever, ever had in its life. Ever. Like ever. Okay? For momentum, for volatility, for the move that it's going to make. And if you know how to day trade, you'll be able to capitalize on it. If you know how to swing trade, you'll be able to capitalize on it. And if you don't know what to do or you do the incorrect thing, it could be a disastrous year for you and you'll look back and you won't know what to do with yourself. And that will happen to some people because the distance between the people that are successful and the people that fail will be wide. Benefit of a system is that it forces you to stay focused daily. It forces your brain, your mind, everything you got to stay honed in and focused on the right strategy, the correct decision, the right directional bias, long or short. Daily focus helps you make money. That's the reason you're doing this. You're not doing this for any other reason. I know trading is fun. Hey, I love it too. But it is to make money. Boom, that's it. Okay? Otherwise, you could do something else to make money. So how do you learn the system? I teach a class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. The Golden Gap Course is a two-day class on how to trade professional bearish gaps. The Golden Gap Course is designed to help you strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. And the class is this weekend, January 10th and 11th. It's the first class of the year. What does the Golden Gap system consist of? And what is really necessary for a complete trading system? The following components, specifically and in their entirety. Number one, a strategy. A system, you must have a strategy. It's gaps for me. Number two, you need to play. The play is how you're entering and exiting the trade. You can have a strategy if you don't know how to enter it or exit it. It's pointless. So you need to know how to enter it and how to figure out targets. And number three, you need an edge. And for me, the edge in the strategy itself is the 26-point rating system because that is so specialized and specific and detailed that it pinpoints what stock I am supposed to look at each day or ETF and in what direction to play it, long or short. That 26-point rating system gives me an edge. It's how I'm able to stay something like the KKD. It's how I'm able to call the market, which we're going to talk about here at the end. The 26-point rating system that I spent three years of my life figuring out is an edge. And I've had the business for two years. I've taught, you know, however many people, all those people have an edge in their trading. I've actually been able to teach people how to do what I do. The amount of money that you make has to do with what you risk. You have to use what you got. But if you are losing or not making money, then you got to learn how to do it. It's like you really have to have everything, all the pieces of the puzzle. You cannot be missing even one thing if you want to be successful. Too many people want to trade. But the good thing is that you do not need 100 strategies and plays to make money in the market. You need one strategy, one play, which works. And if you can combine one strategy and one play and do them extremely well, then you can make money trading. And if you can make money trading now, you can make it continually for the rest of your life. And if you want to day trade, gaps happen and you're out quick. If you're taking the overnights, you're in them, you're in them on the live day, you get in them the day, and then you hold them and monitor them and check them a couple times a week or each day. You can make a little bit of money now, but eventually you can make more money over time. So even if you're at the point right now where you can say, listen, I can only risk $50 a trade. Okay, fine. Learn it. Do it. Because in a year from now, you might be able to risk more. And I've seen it happen with people. It's all about the focus, the consistency, and longevity. And most people lack all three of these things and have zero direction. I mean, people have just no direction whatsoever. They lack focus, they lack consistency, and they have no longevity in the market. Longevity is something where you're in it and you're in it for the long haul. Like you're trading actively all the way. You're not in it for a year and then you quit. And you take five years off and you come back. You're like back and forth, back and forth like a YOLO like we talked about. I don't have any certain scan. You just, you can get, you can use whatever scanner you want. I have no set thing. I'm not selling software. You use whatever scanner you see fit. So to review, what is that one thing that you're missing in your trading? It's the golden gap analysis. This is a critical component to keep your trading as profitable as you can be on a consistent level. Because the golden gap rating system helps you analyze the gap by using it daily. The gap is the critical piece that many people are missing. They see gaps. They don't understand them. Okay? They actually see what a gap is, but they don't get the significance of it. And how do you know the significance of it? The rating system tells you that. The, it pinpoints what to do in the chart. Go long, sell it, or short it. This is such a critical piece of the puzzle in every trader's knowledge base, and yet so many traders miss it. Or they actually do not understand it. They see it, but they don't get it. 
Don't miss what is something that you can wrap your head around, meaning it's possible for you to actually understand it. Don't miss it, okay? You can wrap your head around this and learn it and use it for profit. So what do you get from the 26-point rating system? A full understanding of price action. That's the only thing that you need. If you took everything off your chart, you can do it. And you found it and find it by pulling all the information together that's in the gap. So learning how to analyze and understand this one specific strategy will help you to become successful. Okay. Remember, you need an edge in trading. You, you need an edge. The edge is really that you have everything that you need to do it. It's not you can say, well, I really know all this. I've been doing all this for so long. I know this. I know this. I know this. I know this. I, I really don't, I don't even need this. I know it. But you're not making enough money or you're just making a little or you're actually losing or you're barely break even after fees and costs and commissions. It's because you don't have that edge. You have to stand out in the crowd. I stand out in a crowd when I trade. And trust me when I say, if I ever decided to start a hedge fund, it would be way more than $100 million. And I would stand out in the market with decisions. Now, the choices that I make if I ran a fund would be way different than the choices I make now because I would be in a different placement with different risk and making decisions based for different reasons. But the fact is that you as one person don't need to concern yourself with that. All you have to do is read what the institutions are doing in the price of the gap. And that's a great thing about being one person. And by golly, you can have a lot of money as one person and make good money in this. You don't even need to go the road of doing something in a hedge fund. But I am ever amazed about the number of people that actually are wealthy that have several million dollars in start funds that have no idea how to trade. And then you wonder how they lose. Now, they, can, they may be able to ride the turns and, and be in and out and take the downturns. But who would want to do that? Why would you want that stress? Just learn how to trade. Just do it. Kathy, I'm just going to email the, the winners in at the end. You can email them to me. I'm going to email them tonight. Don't worry about it now because I need to go over the market too. The Golden Gap course will teach you a strategy that will help it sustain you in the market. Sustain you. Like you're going to be able to keep doing it. Instead of having your account just blow up and then having to refund it and blow up and then having to refund it. Sustain means you, you do the class. You start trading. You learn it. You do it. You stay with it. Boom. Okay. Trading is about consistency and longevity. And if you want to have longevity, you need to produce consistent results. And the Golden Gap course teaches you how to get consistent results in your trading. Now is the time to set New Year's resolutions if you want to, or a plan of action. And it's really about your monetary goals. What are your goals for the year? How much money do you want to make this year? Not just this year, maybe five years from now. But I think this year is very significant. It's very significant because what the market's going to do. And taking the Golden Gap class is the first step to assist you in achieving the financial goals you have set for yourself and your family. And it's so early in the year. You're setting yourself, you're setting right on the course. I, I must advise people not to trade without a plan of action, not to trade without the right knowledge, not to take trades without knowing what to do. And people do it. I mean, I just told you people, people do it all the time. They do it and they do it with lots of money and they do it. Okay? But this is what makes the market. I mean, this is what makes the market. It's a beautiful thing, really, you know. How could I do well if I didn't have people out there not knowing what to do? <laughs> so, I mean, but I'm just, you know, I'm here with you now, and I'm telling you, you know, you want to be one of those people that knows what to do. But actually, if we didn't have people that didn't know what to do, then, you know, those of us that are doing well, you know, wouldn't have the potential. Success also involves risk. Successful people don't spend time thinking while opportunity passes them by. People will be doing that this year, and they did it last year in the market. People who take risk get rewarded in life because they are willing to take a chance. It's the same way in your personal relationships. What if you never wanted to take a chance and fall in love? What a lonely life you could be. You could go away and just build a cabin up on top of a mountain and live alone, and you could have no stress. You never have an argument with anyone. You never have any stress. You pretend you didn't even have social media, but you wouldn't have any friends. You wouldn't have any love. You wouldn't have anyone in your life. You'd be bored, silly, and lonely. Is that the kind of life you want to lead? No. you got to take a chance. You take a chance in life, in love, in the market. You take a chance by doing something different with your life if you're not happy with your current career or your current trading. Success doesn't come without taking a risk and making an effort, and I don't care what you do. It's the same all around. This is just one of those principles of life. The people that are willing to take risks and move forward in their life get rewarded, and people that do not don't. If there was no risk involved in trading in life, then everyone would be successful. And not everyone is successful in life or the market. So you got to ask yourself, do you want to be successful or not? And January is a great time to do it. Because you could start to get serious about your trading now. You could go on a diet. I mean, this is a time of the year people start exercise programs. It's like you're totally motivated. Brand new start to the year. Everything's possible. 
You got 12 months to make it all happen. Whew, that's a long time. I'm not saying it takes that long, but who, you know, you could get on a diet, start an exercise plan, take the class, start trading, quit your job in a year, whatever. You've got to set your own plan of action. How much money you want to make? All of these things. You've got to have a plan and set it down and actually put it on paper. I was talking about this earlier about conviction. You've got to get conviction in your trading. And the Golden Gap rating system gives me conviction. This is how I'm able to take risk. Whether it's 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, I don't care how much money you risk. You have to have conviction to take. I want to risk a dollar. I don't want to even risk 50 bucks. I don't want to risk 25 cents if I don't have conviction. If I say I have zero conviction, then I'm not trading today. That's what I say to myself, okay? You've got to have conviction no matter what it is. So the one thing missing in your trading may be the thing that you need that gives you the conviction. You've got to stop floundering all over the place. It doesn't do you any good. And it is a general lack of conviction that causes people to be all over the board. The one thing you need is a full understanding of the strategy and gaps. Gaps exist in everything and they are significant. It's how I'm able to make the calls I'm making. If you gain conviction in golden gaps, you'll make better decisions in your trading. You will just overall make better decisions in your trading. You will have a higher level of conviction. You will trust yourself in your own decisions. When you trust yourself in your own decisions, you can move forward in your life. That does not mean that sometimes you may make a decision that doesn't turn out the way that you thought, but you made a decision the best that you could with all the information you had available at hand and you trusted yourself. Something happens, you learn from the experience. You take it forward into the next step of your life, and guess what? You're going to move to another level. If you don't trust yourself, all is lost. You have to have conviction to be able to trust yourself to take the risk and to do it, and you have to know what that feels like. And many, many people cannot do it. They are not doing it. They will never be able to do it because they don't even know what I'm talking about. But the fact that you are here may mean that you kind of maybe know what I'm talking about or needed to hear something that I said tonight. So the Golden Gap course, it gives you conviction because the 26-point rating system is detailed, it's precise, it's complete, and it helps you to make money by knowing what to look at. It also is something that I said can be used to take overnight moves. And you could use that to do an option trade too if you'd rather do that than the day trades. It pinpoints you to tell you high probability of directional bias for the entire day, whether long or short. You're looking for the stock or the ETF that would have a big move in the day based on the gap rating. And you're looking for early confirmation of the bias, which is into the open. And you're looking with precise entries with follow through to take the position. That's how you're making money. It's all about power. Again, going back, institutional power in the gap. Lots of money, not a little, lots. Okay. There's power in this knowledge. There's power in the system I created and I figured out. There's power in having conviction. There's power in trusting yourself. There's power in information. And that information, when you have that power, is what you're going to use to make money. Because if I just handed you XYZ amount of money, you could go take in the market and blow it. That's a danger of training if you don't know what to do. It's you. The power is you. You're the one that makes it happen. You're the one that takes the information that has the brain to do it, to take the press the button to take the trade. Now, I do run a live training room. It's for students only. I'm running a special. If you sign up for the class this weekend, you can get January and February free in the room. If you're interested in more information on the class this weekend, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. It's a two-day course from 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Retakes are free. The class is online. Cost of the class is $2,999. Email me at melissaatthestockswish.com if you are interested. And I'm running a trends class later in January. January 27th and 29th. This is a separate course on how to read longer term trends. This is more for longer term trend people. Cost of this class is $9.99. And if you want to sign up for both, both classes in January, one this week and one at the end of the month, you can get the trends class for half off. You save $500. Now, I'm going to email the winners tonight. I didn't think we'd have time, just so everyone knows. Happy New Year again, everyone. Thank you for coming. What we're going to do is plop everybody over into my room. I'm going to review the market. I'm going to talk about what I see for this calendar year for the stock market, why this year is going to be a big one, and answer any of your questions since we're right up at the time. Does anyone have anything they want to say right now? Kathy, are you ready to try to send everybody to my room? Thank you for coming. I'm still going to be here. We're going to go over the market, but Kathy's going to send us to the other room. And here's my email again. <laughs>
Okay, let me know if everybody can hear me. Kathy, did everybody make it? It looks like everybody did. Okay, good. All right, first things first. Before I talk about the market, does anyone have any questions about the lecture I just gave? We were right up against the time. We can be more relaxed here now. We're not being timed. Does anyone have any questions about anything I just talked about in the lecture? If you do, ask them. If you think of some later, you can always email me too. Kathy, if you can just put my email in the room again. If you, it's Melissa at thestockswish.com. I've had people take the class that took it to use for futures, Tom. I personally have not done it myself. So, again, you would have to know how to do the future trade. Just like I'm not doing option trades, you'd have to know how to do that separate piece of the puzzle. You know what I mean? So, you would do that yourself, do the future trade. You would use the information in the rating system. That's how you would do it, but she wouldn't be taking the same type of trade as me. You would have a different type of account than me as a broker. That would be on you, but you'd learn the rating system. And actually, you might do a little bit of both. Maybe you do a little bit of both. Maybe you use it for, for two things, you know. I've actually find that a lot of people that have taken the class, first of all, most people that have taken the class actually do what I do. And there's some people that take the class then and they go into it saying they're going to just do options or whatever. And then they end up taking the class and then they're in the room and then they're like, want to do the day trades. So, you know, people do it and then they think that they want to do one thing with it and then they see it working the way that I'm doing. They're like, oh, let's just do this. Because it's really, I mean, I just showed you the KKD trade, but a lot of the gaps do have those kinds of moves in the morning and you're just up so quick. You know, the volatility comes in very quickly. Uh, when an institution wants to buy a stock or dump a stock into the open. Okay. And, and if you think of any other questions, you can ask me too. But the class is this weekend, and if you want more information on that, just email me individually. All right, let's look at the market. Now, the market did drop today. Let's, let's first, let's just go back to the beginning here. I actually, I woke up this morning, the market was like really neutral. Like, it wasn't really gapping down. It was like a neutral. But then we didn't end up gapping into the open. Down. This was a bearish gap that happened in the market today. We are just talking about gaps. The market closed. I'm looking at the QQQs. It's up here. This is a market ETF. This is not a stock. Friday, the market closed at 102.82. And then this morning, we opened at 102.49. Again, it's not about the size, per se. Okay? This did actually gap 30 cents down. And the market actually went red today. Actually, let's see the high here. High was 102.61, low was 101.14. Market had more than a dollar drop today in the QQQs. So one of the things I've been talking about is going back to institutions, how nothing goes in a straight line. Now, it kind of looked like this was almost a straight line. If any of you were traders, this was back beginning uh, middle of October. The market was just on a continuous rally up. Look at that, for like more than a month, or right up into Thanksgiving. QQQs ran all the way up to 106.24, ended up being the high of the year in 2014. And this was almost vertical, but this is very unusual. You will sometimes have something like this happens in a move. It was lasted a while, and this is like five, six weeks. But you do have sometimes, and mostly where you will have something playing against the current move, which you have in the drop down here. And you have the drop down that's happening here. And it happened in here. But you see how the market rallied over it and then continued up. This is what I was talking about. I was talking about there's different players in the market, even some with money. Because it takes money to move the market like this today. I and mean, this was money that moved the market today. Look at the volume. You can look up at the square. The V in the third row to the top left-hand corner is the volume, the chart. So you had people with money in here today. And this was actually was some selling that happened in here today. It was selling going on today in the market. Okay. Now, would I have shorted this? No. Did I short this? No. No, I didn't. Okay. The 2015 call that I've been making for the market is that we'll continue higher. And that this is going to be a very significant year to trade because it's going to end up moving higher and in a way that is so unexpected. Because a lot of people actually feel that the market's extended. 
And this is where they're getting this from. They're looking at the rally the markets had, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. It is now 2015. People are looking and saying, well, how long could this possibly continue? It can continue as long as it wants. I look at this chart and I don't say it's extended. I actually say it's a beautiful chart. It is a beautiful chart, by the way. And the market's higher. So my call for the markets is higher. And one of the reasons that I think that this is going to be such a year for such opportunity for people that know how to read this stuff right is that what is going to transpire this year is, will be very unexpected. Because a lot of people are looking at the market that has had a big rally and that it is due for some significant correction. Okay, you want to call it that. And that it can't possibly keep going any higher. And then people also look at economics and all kinds of things and they say this, that, and the other thing. I don't look at any of that stuff, but people do. And then they believe that the market's going to have a correction. And in fact, a lot of people are actually saying the market's going to crash. Or when people are saying the market's going to crash, I think, I think as early as even spring of last year. I, I really think it was spring of last year because I remember doing a webinar. Yes, I did. You can go back on, someone was looking at my old YouTube videos. I did a webinar in March for some, some place. It wasn't HotCon. And... People were saying here, I think, at this time it was going to crash. They were definitely saying it was a correction. They were, I think they were saying this was the top and it was going to crash. And I, I said in the webinar, it's not. And in fact, I said it on a day that the market was running red. And I, I don't think anyone believed me. And then the market made a new high in May <laughs> and continued. And here I said it's higher and all along, and I keep saying it. So I like to short a lot. That's mostly what I do, but I can do bullish gaps and go long and you can flip the points for the rating system to go long. But if I like to short and I'm telling you the market's not as short, the market's higher, what do you think? I mean, the thing is that it, you know, for me to love to short and to say the market's higher, it's like people, you know, listen to what I'm saying. So getting back to what I was saying about 2015, one of the reasons that 2015 is going to be a year you're going to want to day trade is because it's going to be a lot of momentum and volatility. And in, in reference to the QQQs and the SPY, it's going to be the upside. And as a result of that, there's going to be significant moves in stocks that are strong, stocks that are good buys, they're going to have big jumps. Some of them are going to move 30%. Some of them are going to double. There's, there's some stocks that are going to double in value in the market. Most will have similar moves to the to the market if they're strong, and then some that are weak are going to get dumped, and then they're going to just collapse, and they're going to look like target, but in the opposite direction where they have a vertical drop. Because stuff that people want to sell out of or be done with is going to almost just collapse, and then you're going to have opportunity on the short side for stuff to go to the dream target. But it's going to be one of those years where you're going to have so much momentum and volatility in both directions because of the way that things are setting up that it is so unexpected. Because there's an expectation, there's a belief system. It's a belief system. There's a belief system right now that the market's been rallying for a while and it's due for correction. There's a belief system by a lot of people right now that the market is actually uh, going to crash. There's a belief system right now that the economy is not uh, reflective in what this market rally has been. But the reality is that has nothing to do with what people are doing with their money. Because the people that are wealthy, that are moving the market, that have the money are doing it. And they're doing fine. Okay, and they have to do something with their money. They need to make it. And it's much, much easier for institutions actually to buy than it is to short. But they do both. They do do both, okay? But it is easier actually for them to go long. So the market's higher in 2015, that's my call. QQQs will make a new high. Let's chart back up here. Over 120, 120, 125. It's not the next target in the QQQs, but the market will hit up over 120, 125 this year. And the target for the QQQs this year that I'm calling is 150, possibly 175, although I don't really want to say that for sure. I did think the market and the QQQs would reach 108 by the end of the year. It halted around 106.25 ish. Couldn't really get going in a low volume holiday seasonal time. But We'll definitely get up over 120 this year and 150. Okay, Kathy, thank you. Uh, you know, that's, there's a, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Anna Tez, I don't want to say her name wrong. Anna Ta Taz, I, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong, Anna. Anna Tez is asking a 
question. She's saying, Anna, are you a girl or a guy? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't recognize the name. I don't want to call you a girl if you're a guy. I keep thinking Anna. Okay. Uh, oh, you're a girl. Good. Who controls, well, not good, but <laughs> I didn't get it wrong. Who controls the high-frequency trades? There's a there's just just the same thing as the lecture I did about the institutions. There's all different levels of high of high frequency trading. Like there's all different levels of that too. You see what I'm saying? It's there's all different levels of the same thing of that going on as well. Like that's why you can have a bar like the like the uh, I wish I could think of another one I could show you besides the KKD. But that's why you have a bar like this here. Let me just the KKD is the most recent example I can think. But there's you know, there, there's others. Let me just go back to this again. It was the 10. Like, this was a machine. And again, this is, it's so hard to describe because we are flat now. Nothing's moving. The market's closed. This trade happened, you know, umpteen weeks ago. This, this, you think this, this is just, this looks like do, 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 do. But actually when this happened, it was like, you know, like literally when you, see, that's the thing. Like when you're seeing everything flat, but there's the only way I could describe it to you unless you're trading live. This looks like it's just like opened here at 1889 and rallied all the way up like a nice, beautiful person to 1929 and then closed here at 1910. But this here was a machine, okay? So there you have it. But did this machine overrun the world on the day here in KKD? No, how do I know? Because the stock on the day, let's go to it. This is a daily chart. Stock on the day here ended up closing at 1864. So this machine person, let's call him Mr. Smith, okay, did not have an effect on the stock on the day not working correctly for me as a day trader because the stock ended up closing on the day at 1864, and actually low of the day was 1818, and none of those numbers are anywhere near this. So if Mr. Smith came in here and bought this stock and made this big there, which actually, look, there was only 42,000 shares. You can see the volume again, but still it was a big bar. So this was a machine that happened here because it was quick and fast. Sometimes they look like a flash. Sometimes they're, you know, I don't know what you mean by a flash. A flash to me is like a millisecond. Something could happen quick, like could happen in 15 seconds, that it's like, woo, woo, but I have time to like see it, to like make a decision if I needed to. But there was no decision to be made here. You just stay with the trade. But I'm saying sometimes you would see something that wasn't right, and you might want to actually get out of it. But that wasn't the case here. All right, so let's go back to the market. So one of the one of the reasons why it's so significant for 2015 to take advantage of opportunity as a day trade is because there's going to be a lot of momentum. There's going to be a lot of volatility. And it's going to be in both directions. You're going to have to know how to play it. And people are going to try to short stuff or fade stuff that is actually going to continue to rally. People are going to try to buy stuff actually that comes into support that is actually stuff that they shouldn't be buying because they're going to think that you can buy anything because the market's rally. It's all over the place that it's going to be challenging to trade this year in the market unless you know what to do. But if you know what to do, it's going to be like, it's going to be like, like pickings every day, like just really good year. But that's how it is in the market normally in the sense that the people that do well make a lot. It just so happens that this year is going to have just boatloads of opportunity for people to know how to trade because there's going to be a ton of volume and momentum and volatility and movement in the market. And the market's going to have a huge bullish move that no one's expecting. And I called the bullish move we had, I've been calling it all year. You can go back and watch every market video I did where I said what was going to happen beforehand. And obviously some of you watched the videos, so I will keep doing market videos. Where we go tomorrow, I have no idea. No idea. Today was the first day of a holiday, week being back. No clue where we go tomorrow. So we'll have to see. It's, how, do, how am I going to know? I'm going to know from the gap. And I don't think we're gapping anywhere tonight. 
I think we're flat here. Yeah, we are just, just flat. Anyways, the market's higher, and I think this is something where if you understand what I talked about all the lecture, if you understand the significance, the missing piece, the reading of the gaps, the bullish ones, the bearish ones, if you know what to look for, you will understand what I'm saying. The people that are in the room with me that did the class, they know this. I've been talking about it for months. But if you don't, you might be convinced this market's going to crash. And we've had four red trading days. And we've also had a lower high. And people, and we've had a lower low and a lower high too. And people are going to, this is just because people more conviction that don't know what they're doing that we're going to come in. Because the market rallied up, came in, broke the pivot, came in, made a lower low, came in, made a lower high. This is how people make trading decisions. I don't. I do not. But I know what my opponent is thinking. And they're thinking that this is giving them confirmation with the selling in here and the lower highs and lower lows, that the market is going to crash, that it is coming in. And the market gapped down today, and it sold off. And then people look at that. And again, people don't know how to read gaps right. And they think the market's going to come in. It's going to pull in all the way to some crazy number. It's going to crash or do whatever. Okay. And people are actually getting conviction that the market, after the activity of the last few days, and specifically today because the market gapped down and fell all day, people are getting conviction that the market is lower. And so people get scared. They're in longs. They sell them. People don't know what to do. They don't want to buy. They think, well, maybe we should short it. So then they take a short trade. But know that the correct way to read this is to trade with the institutional positioning, which is not in a direction that anyone should be shorting. The institutions are in the market long and the market's higher. And I know that from reading the gaps, I know how to read power money. And power money, again, is billions and a hundred million or more and not baby hedge funds. Does anyone have any specific questions? I'm just talking, talking, talking here now. Ask me if you have any specific questions about anything at all that I'm talking about, anything whatsoever. If not, I'm just going to let everybody go. Email me if you'd like more information about the class this weekend or if you want to sign up. Again, I'm offering two months free, January and February in the room. Oops, I don't know why that did that. With the class this weekend, which is a good amount of time to be in the room, take the trades with me, and also be in the room during earnings season. Because first quarter earnings season starts during that time. And there's many, many, many gaps in earnings season to trade. Any questions for anyone at all? Okie doke. If you think of something later, email me. I'm going to email the people that won the five people that won the contest. Kathy was just going to email it to me. I'll check that. I'll email you tonight. You're welcome. Okay, great. All right, have a good night, everyone. If you'd like more information on the Golden Gap class, email me at melissa at Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Have a good evening.